morning and welcome to our Sunday online worship together with Regent Hall Salvation Army. Welcome to worship. It seems a bit strange saying that because today's actually Friday the 4th of September, but I'm going on holiday, so I need to film this before I go. Of course, over the next couple of weeks, many things may happen. For a start off, we will have had um, our first meeting back at Regent Hall. So let me take this opportunity to apologise now if there's things that I don't um, refer to or speak about because um, this has been filmed early. Um, today is week three in our season of creation. We're going to be looking at some verses from Matthew's Gospel and the story of the workers in the vineyard. This will lead us nicely into celebrating our harvest next week on Sunday the 27th of September as our young people lead our worship with Major Richard bringing us the teaching. Thank you as ever to all those who helped put this week's worship together. Please know that it's not taken for granted. We also think of those who may be gathering together for worship at Regent Hall, actually in Oxford Street. And my prayer is that whether we're worshipping virtually at home or whether we're actually at the building at Regent Hall, that each of us will experience God's touch upon us and the infilling, infilling of the Holy Spirit as we come before the cross today. Perhaps you'll join with me in saying some words from Psalm 105 and verses 1 to 6. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength, seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. You servants, the descendants of Abraham, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. Amen. to have a time of prayer together now so let's pray together dear lord thank you that we can take time to worship you today faithful one whose word is life come with saving power to free our praise inspire our prayer and shape our lives please take all that has been prepared and multiply our efforts as only you can remind us of your faithful provision for us each day may all the glory go to you 
Lift our eyes to seek you first today. Shift our perspective to seek your peace above all else and give us re renewed strength and godly courage to obey you without questioning. Forgive us for striving beyond our means. Guard our hearts from pride and selfish gain. Help us to keep being thankful that you are our provider, giving us over and above all we need every day. In Jesus' name, Amen. Perhaps you'll join with me in saying the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen and Amen. We've had some great testimonies over the weeks of lockdown when we were worshipping together virtually and hopefully that will continue. And this week we're going to hear from someone who we perhaps don't normally see on a Sunday, but somebody who has recently celebrated working at Regent Hall Salvation Army for 20 years. Alan Wall, who is a Salvationist at Ilford Corps, is also one of our staff here at Regent Hall. And he's going to share with us now what it's been like for him during lockdown, being furloughed and now being back. Thanks, Alan, for all you do. It's really great working with you. Good morning to you all. My name is Alan. Over the last 20 years, I've been part of the events team at Regent Hall. I would like to acknowledge the commanding officer, Major Alan Burns and Mr Richard Heathman, the centre manager. They have been a great inspiration to me in the early days. During my time at Regent Hall, there have been many events where I have met people, organisers over the years. But it's not only about events, there have been many visitors, homeless clients and the members of the Regent Hall Corps who have made me very welcome. It has been a privilege to be able to follow the activities that happen within the church and the outreach ministry. Every day is a new challenge and we thank God for inner strength and for each other. Many of the events at Regent Hall have been going on since I started, but sadly due to ill health and many of the groups are much older are unable to travel. Therefore, some events are now unable to continue. There is no doubt things are changing when you look out into Oxford Street. 20 years ago, there were so many people you could not see across the street. Now, when you look onto the street, it's so different. There is a song that says, I dare to be different, I dare to believe. We have to look forward to the future and that we will open our doors fully again and welcome the people into our venue and place of worship. Over the 20 years, there have been many changes. However, the one thing that remains the same is that Regent Hall is a church as well as a venue for hiring. I have always respected this, making sure that after the last event on Saturday evenings, the church is set ready for worship on a Sunday morning. In the last five months, we've been dealing with COVID-19. This has been a very difficult time for a lot of people with doubt and uncertainty of what's still to come. During this time, I have had to be furloughed as I was unable to work from home. While being on furlough, a chorus came to mind that I think of quite often. I would like to share this chorus with you as my testimony this morning. I have a pilot that guides me night and day, through cloud and sunshine, come what may. Dangers are, may threaten me, I never fear. I'm full of confidence while he is near. I have a pilot that guides me along life's way. Amen. Our Bible reading this morning is taken from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 20 and verses 1 to 16. And it is the story of the workers in the vineyard. And Penny is going to bring our Bible reading to us today. Penny works tirelessly doing a lot of the technology, um, the technological stuff for us at Regent Hall. She is amazing. Um, she has the patience of a saint, especially having to work with me, who as a bit of a techno, um, 
techno fool if you like um she is amazing so please listen to penny penny bab as she brings us our bible reading now thank you the bible reading this morning is taken from matthew chapter 20 verses 1 to 16 and i'm reading from the new international version the reading is called the parable of the workers in the vineyard For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hard and going on to the first. The workers who were hard about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hard first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hard last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hard last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Amen.
British renowned for? Now, there may be many things that come to mind, but I'm thinking in particular of the Brits' ability to queue. It's an art that everyone's had to learn during the coronavirus pandemic, with queuing to get into shops and just about everywhere. But my mind is taken back to 2009. It was a year when a certain person, very close to my heart, turned 40. And so we had a family holiday to a certain Disney theme park. Being British, we went and we stood in queues. But the whole queuing system didn't seem to work over there. People just walked in front of you and they just did it without thinking, with gay abandon. Now, they say that confession is good for the soul. And we had been queuing to get on the cars that the boys could drive. They were going to drive mum and dad um, around. And we had been queuing for a long time. Seeing the faces of the boys getting longer and longer as time passed, I decided to take action. And so we all held hands and stood in a chain right across the pathway so that no one could pass us. Bad, aren't I? But that did make me think about our Bible reading for today. Our reading is a parable which is only found in Matthew's Gospel. It's not in any of the other three Gospels. Like in all parables though, Jesus tells a story about normal everyday things, daily things in the life of the people who were listening to him. He paints a picture of the social situation of his time in which the listeners recognise themselves. At the same time, in the story of this parable, there are things which never take place in the reality of the life of the people, because in speaking about the landowner, Jesus thinks about God, about his father. This is why in the story of the parable of the workers in the vineyard, the landowner does things which are surprising and which are unlikely to take place in the daily life of the listeners. So let's see if we can get the message of this parable for us today. The opening verses of our reading said, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner going out at daybreak to hire workers for his vineyard. He made an agreement with the workers for one denarius a day and sent them to his vineyard. This is how the story begins and, in all honesty, it speaks for itself without needing much else said. The landowner goes out and finds workers for his vineyard. Work was scarce at the time, which was why men would go out early into the main squares and hope to be hired for a day's work. What follows, though, with the landowner going out four further times uh, to call other workers to go and work in his vineyard is perhaps unusual. So a synopsis of the story is that the landowner himself goes out personally five times to contract workers. When he contracts the workers, he fixes the salary only for the first group, one denarius a day. To those of nine o'clock in the morning, he says, I will give you what is just, what is fair. With the others, he doesn't fix anything. He contracted them only to work in his vineyard. And at the end of the day, when it was the time to pay the workers, the landowner orders the foreman to carry out this service of paying the workers. But it was a strange way of fixing the accounts at the end of the day. When it was evening, the landowner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going to the first ones. Here, at the end of the day, when it's time to settle the accounts, something strange takes place. Something that wouldn't normally happen in real life. It seems that things are inverted. Things have been switched about. The foreman begins to pay those who were contracted just an hour before. The salary is the same for all, one denarius, as it was agreed with the first ones who were contracted at the beginning of the day. When the first came, they expected to get more, but they too received one denarius each. Why does the landowner act like that? If you were in his position, would you do the same? 
It is precisely in this surprising gesture of the landowner that the key to understanding this parable is hidden. Having been working hard, I guess those workers would have finished for the day expecting the pay they'd been promised and would have gone away tired but happy. I might think that would be the normal reaction of the workers, but that was before the strange ways of the landowner. The last workers get their payment first and not only that, they get the same as those contracted first. The story says that the workers began to grumble against the landowner and said, the men who came last have done only one hour and you have treated them the same as us, though we have done a heavy day's work in all the heat. In light of what happened, grumbling may well be the expected reaction of someone seemingly being treated unfairly. I think that maybe all of us would have had the same reaction and would have said the same thing to the landowner, wouldn't we? The response of the landowner to the grumbling, though, is this. My friend, I am not being unjust to you. Did we not agree on one denarius? Take your earnings and go. I choose to pay the last comer as much as I pay you. Have I no right to do what I like with my own money? Why should you be envious? Because I am generous. And this is perhaps the surprising explanation of the landowner which gives us the key to this parable. What he says explains the attitude of the landowner and indicates the message which Jesus wants to communicate to us. The landowner was not unjust because he acts according to what he had agreed with the first group of workers, one denarius a day. It is the decision of the landowner to give to the last ones the same amount that he had agreed upon with those of the first hour. It is his decision and the workers do not have the right to complain or claim anything. Acting with justice, the landowner has the right to do what he wants with the things that belong to him. The worker, on his part, has the same right. But the last question, why should you be envious because I am generous, touches on the central point. The landowner thinks differently to the workers and so it is likened to God. God is different and his thoughts are not our thoughts. In Isaiah chapter 55 and verses 8 and 9 it says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The background of the parable is the circumstance of time, for Jesus as well as for Matthew. The workers of the first hour are the Jewish people, called by God to work in his vineyard. They bear the weight of the day from Abraham to Moses for over 1,000 years. Now at the 11th hour, Jesus calls the Gentiles to work in his vineyard and they succeed in having the preference in the heart of God. Thus the first ones will be last and the last will be first. But so what for today? Reflecting back, the landowner surprises the workers with his attitude, but ultimately he is just and fair and everyone gets what they need. Sometimes God's action surpasses our thinking and our human way of acting. He surprises us and sometimes that is uncomfortable. Can you look back and think of a time when this has happened in your life and what lessons have you been able to learn from that? In some ways, you know, it makes me think of people who have deathbed conversions, having led a life which, let's say, stray from biblical teaching. I've heard people saying how it isn't fair that people who have led their lives according to their own rule book and then on their deathbed ask for forgiveness and receive it, still then get into heaven when, they have been, when others have been striving their whole lives to live a good life. 
And you know, that idea makes me smile because the Christian who feels aggrieved at the deathbed conversion is convinced that that new convert who has led life their own way has lived a more exciting life than they've led. Yet as Christians, we believe that living life in a relationship with God is the best life we can possibly live. When you go back to our parable, those men who got taken on at the start of the day had the whole day confident of payment at the end of the day. Whereas those men who had been stood in the square until the 11th hour had had a day of anxiety and concern because they thought they would be going home empty handed that day. We love and serve a generous God and I love the fact that those who are last shall be first. Instead of feeling jealous or aggrieved that people are being forgiven and getting into heaven, we should be celebrating that there is another citizen of heaven to celebrate with when that day comes. Whether we have been a Christian for years or whether we're a baby Christian and new to the faith, be assured that God gives us all we need. In fact, I'd go further than that. He gives us more than we need. As David said in Psalm 23, our cups runneth over. When you think about it, if God only gave us what we need, how would we have anything to give away? The tagline for today is that God gives enough for our need, not our greed. So that takes us back to our attitudes, doesn't it? Let's celebrate and thank God that he gives us more than we need. And let's celebrate that we can share that with others. Let's not be greedy and hold on to things for ourselves, but let's be thankful for a God who gives us more than enough. Let's pray together. Almighty God, you are bountiful in your love for us and shower us generously with all that we need. By your grace, give us generous hearts that we may declare your goodness and offer our lives back to you in thankful worship. We, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness to us and to all people. We bless you for our creation, preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be truly thankful and that we show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be your honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen.
worshipping with us today. Next week will be our harvest celebrations with Majors Richard and Carolyn and our young people. Please do join us if you're able. We will have our online service as usual next week but if you would like to join us at Regent Hall then please go online and book your seat. The booking form will close on Wednesday the 23rd of September and you will get a confirmation email or phone call by Friday the 25th of September to say if you have got a place. As always, please look after yourselves. And if you are over 70 or vulnerable, please think carefully before gathering unnecessarily. We want everyone to keep safe and well. If you do book a seat, but then begin to feel unwell on the day, then again, please do not attend. We're in this together and we need to look after each other. But let's close our worship today with a benediction from Paul's second letter to the Corinthian church. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. 
aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.